Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Grow with Katie live at Homestead Gardens. Now, Terry and I are not at Homestead Gardens, although we wanted to be, but we are joining you from our living rooms or our homes, and we wanted to welcome you in here. It's kind of a gloomy day here in Pennsylvania. How about there in Maryland? Gloomy, a little nippy, drizzly. Yeah, well, you know what? Today's are good garden planning days, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I am your host, Katie Dubow, and I am so excited to welcome in our guest for the day, Terry Spate. Please welcome her and say hello if you guys are out there in the comments. Please welcome her. Today we're going to talk about gardening community. Um, one of the things that Terry is passionate about. She's a passionate garden and garden communicate gardener and garden communicator. Um, and the other thing that Terry is passionate about is bringing people together. So I'm really excited about that. And we'd love to hear from you out there. What is your favorite gardening group or what is your favorite way to get together with each other, whether it be in real life or online, your favorite garden group, garden groups or um, community gardens or ways that you, you get together? Please let us know. So, hey, Terry, I'm so excited to have you. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Katie. So let me introduce, um, oh, and Peggy, we knew you were going to be here, Peggy. Hey. <laughs> That's my garden bud. <laughs> yes, well, I was just going to introduce introduce you as the host, uh, co-host of Gardens and Plants, a great yes. podcast co-hosted by um, our friend there in the chat, Peggy Riccio. And so I love that um, you guys talk about a lot of different topics, but you're both local to the region. Um, and one of the things about this, this Grow Live that we've had people from all over the country, which is awesome, but Homestead people were saying, what about in our backyard? Yeah. So... You've got a backyard hometown girl here. Um, where do you live? What region do you live in? I'm in District Heights, but I'm a native Washingtonian. Wonderful. So I am very much familiar with the area, mostly, uh, well, D.C., Maryland, and parts of Virginia. Awesome. Yeah. And let us know where you guys are tuning in from. What is your um, region? Where do you live? I'm outside of Philadelphia, but I'm not too far. I visited Homestead many, many times, so I'm not too far. Um, but anyway, back to introducing Miss Terry. She also has the popular blog Cottage in the Court. Where is that name? I never asked you where that name comes from. That name came from my house. Um, 17 years ago now, I bought my house. It is a little cottage you know, 2,100 square feet, and I'm in the middle of a court. So that's where I got my name, Cottage in the Court. I love it. I've seen on my various Facebook groups, people who are leaving the city and buying their new homes, and they ask people, do you name your properties? And you know, it's so funny to hear people, what the names, there's such creative names that people come up with for their little, you know, little slices of this earth that we call our own and we get to tend to. And I love that. I love Cottage mm -hmm. in the Court. Yeah. Um, and you have, you guys can find her at Cottage in the Court. And I love your slogan, finding and creating beauty naturally. That's so right. that's what you like to do. Can you explain that a little bit to everybody? Yeah, I, um, I, I used to be head gardener for the city of Fredericksburg. So I have to give a shout out to Fredericksburg because it's still in my heart. And that's in Virginia. So when I say I am really local, I'm local. Um Finding and creating beauty naturally, because a lot of times we are so busy in life that we skim by so much and beauty can be right in front of us and we overlook it. Mm. So as I have come across people that are busier than life, I help them slow it down a notch and really recognize their green space and create the beauty within so I have one of my major clients lives in the mountains of Virginia and uh, down the Shenandoah. And he had this space. He knew he was renovating the house, but he had no idea what to do with the land. So he had a landscape designer to design the landscape. But then we took it back a notch because deer love hosta. So I said, why don't we do something else a little more deer friendly and that's going to provide you optimal beauty and you'll be able to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And now it doesn't even look like it first looked 14 years ago. Wow. So I just, I help people envision what can be. 
And that's beautiful. It's so hard for people, I think. It's amazing how many people are in, great at designing interiors, but then when it comes to the exterior, they have no idea what is even beautiful to them. People don't know their own sense of, they don't, they can't, it's hard to identify your sense of style outdoors. People, I don't know, it just, you open the doors to your patio and everything goes out of the window. Right. So, um, and your, your designs are beautiful and we love, we love you for that. <laughs> so you guys, we've got, Oxford, PA. Where else are you guys tuning in from? Anyone else local to the region? Let us know. Um, and if you're local, just want to remind everybody that during the month of October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, that mm -hmm. Homestead Gardens is still donating portions of the proceeds. You can up, um, you know how you can at the end of your purchase, make a little donation for all mm -hmm. pink plants that you purchase to the breast cancer research. So mm -hmm. we still got a couple few more days of October left. So don't forget uh, about that. Just wanted to quick tell you that while you're in the store or shopping for pink plants. So mm -hmm. let's jump into it. Terry, um, so you've already talked about why you're so passionate about plants, but where does that history come from? Where, how did that start? Well, I grew up um, in Northeast DC in Riggs Park and my dad, we lived in, um, it was like the middle house. It was not a row house, but I guess you would call it a short row house. And daddy planted my mom a rose garden. And um, because I was a girl, uh, I could not really dig in the dirt, but we did help my mom plant celosia and marigolds. And since I had to watch, I just kind of held it up. And I used to always tell my dad, when I grow up, I'm going to garden. Mm. And that came true. But I watched with everything. I would go to work with him at the Smithsonian. And so I'm very familiar with the Ladybird uh, Wildflower Garden. Mm. All that was like the world to me. And I wanted to be an earth scientist, but uh, instead I got married, had children. Um, but from that point, um, when we lived in Fredericksburg, I took the Master Gardener course mm -hmm. and I was a Central Rappahannock Master Gardener. And then I became uh, an employee of the Extension Office where I did water-wise gardening, telling people how not to use fertilizer in excess. And then from there, uh, I became head gardener for the city of Fredericksburg, and I was there for seven years. Wow. And now I'm back home in Maryland, um, in District Heights, Maryland, and um, I decided to kind of elevate my voice and share my love of gardening with people by writing. Um, and that has morphed into writing and the podcast. And I'm a great garden speaker, and um, I just want to just encourage so many people in spite of everything that we're dealing with, to just connect with the earth. It's just so important and it can, the garden is a healer. The garden um, is a gift. I wrote this little acronym, the G in gift. The garden gives us hope. Mm. The I is for inclusivity. It in, in, it's inclusive of everybody. Nobody is left out of gardening. The F, it fulfills a need. If we have a void in our life, whether it's a house plant or whether it's a garden or a pot on your front porch, it is fulfilling the need to care. And the T, it tests our dedication because who wants to invest time in something and then not go back and give it love? Mm -hmm. So the garden is our gift. Mm -hmm. And I just want to just keep sharing it with the world. Oh, that's so true. I love that. That's beautiful. Now you have your own garden, but you're also a member of a community garden, right? Oh, yes. Fiesta Place. That's my joint. Yes. Fiesta Place is 1,600 square feet. It's right on Gateway Boulevard. There's 14 plots and room for growth. Uh, we survive on a little subsidy from the city. We have had uh, grants in the past from miracle Grow and a um, couple of other places. But when you talk about gardening community, we have a youth group that has two plots in the front. And the other plots all belong to members in the community. One man grows watermelons every year. We've had other people that have grown corn, beans. Right now, um, Callaloo is, is hot and happening in the garden right now. And I wish we could be out there because the garlic that Deborah Turner, who is our chief, she's our head 
the head mistress of the garden. Uh, <laughs> my garlic is like eight to 10 inches tall. It's like, yes. So, and that, that garden, um, that garlic is going to uh, go to a good cause because we're going to share it with the community and we're going to cook with it as well. I love that. I love the concept. So I read an article in the Washington Post a few weeks ago about community gardens and just what you're saying before the pandemic, maybe not at yours. And I'm not a member of a community garden. So maybe this was happening at all community gardens, but people shared. So it wasn't just a plot of land of your own, maybe because you didn't have the space at home, but then you got to learn from the person next to you about how they worked their soil. And then you got to share seeds with people and you got to hear stories. And these community gardens, some of them in the DC region have no space. I mean, they have a waiting list now because they've become uh, such, because as you said, gardens have become, well, the gift. Gardens are such a gift to us in so many ways. Of course, the bounty of the harvest, but that emotional and that mental place to go to wash away whatever stresses of the corona or whatever the day, the normal stresses right. of the day. Um, right. And so that community garden, let us know if you guys are, if you belong to any local community gardens, give them a shout out, tag them here, because I think that it is a, a place where it is building those it's welcoming younger people in and it's building that obviously that sense of true community and passing right. the gardening down from one person or generation or culture even to another right the the cultural there's one lady that's in in the fiesta place gardens and she's from africa so she tries to grow foods that are native to her land um i was not familiar with long beans and we, uh, Deborah gave me some long beans to eat, but then there was one pod that was uh, kind of dried. So I'm saving that for my seeds for next year. So you develop these conversations with people and you figure out different ways that you grow things, um, different ways to use things. Uh, the shorter pickles, put them in jars, put the spices on them, a quick way of canning them. You have to eat them in a certain amount of time, but I mean, why not? But you share these things so your education grows as does the next person. And to me, another beautiful facet of gardening and community is the melding of the ages. Mm. From seniors to young kids. When we first started the community garden, we had Earth Day. We were overrun with children oh. and in the mud, in the dirt. It was wonderful, though. I, I can't tell you how... It really fed my soul to see the community come together. And that whole day, we took pictures. Mm. Everyone grew things. Everyone shared things. And I just think more activities like that should happen all around the city. I agree. I know. Mm. I agree. So what are you still, for people in the region, what are you still doing in the gardening garden now? I feel like besides planting garlic, I've pretty much put my garden to bed this weekend. Oh, no, Is, my, no, no, ooh, my, my, you're still my, going. All right, tell us. <laughs> no, my, my gardening never ends. I've got, um, well, I pinched cuttings of my begonia. So yeah. I'm going to start those inside. But outside, um, it's more it's more than just garlic. It's chalice. Um, I'm trying to overwinter uh, potatoes this year, which last year by accident I did. Oh, but so I'm going to try it on purpose this year. Um, but you got garlic, you got shallots, you got collards, kale, um, spinach, some lettuces, and even when it gets too cold, uh, we invested in like a low hoop house. So we're not stopping. You know, we're it. also creating indoor activities. Um, I'm going to offer some online things that will encourage people to garden inside, but we'll be doing things, not sitting and listening to a lecture. So there's more than one way to do that. You guys want to get up and dance while you're listening to us. We're happy to do that. Yeah. To do that too. <laughs> yeah. Like Terry said, she wanted to be out in her community garden today, but the, the mother nature just had some other plans for us. So that is yeah. fine. Um, well, I know that, so for me, when I do my garlic, I put a layer of compost down and then straw. So I did want to just quickly pull in if you guys, I mean, Maryland has amazing fertilizer regulations and people in the Chesapeake Bay region know about their soil. They know yep. about it. So I just wanted to bring up, make sure you guys know that Homestead has this leaf grow and it is a perfect 
time now to enrich your soil. The fall is a great time to do that, right, Terry? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. And leaf grow has been around forever. So you, you cannot go wrong with leaf grow. <laughs> you text me after one of the other homestead chats and you said, I just went to homestead and I spent a hundred dollars. I think it was because after Brie Arthur. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Um, what else did we do in garden cleanup? Of course here, I don't have a ton. I just planted an oak tree. I planted my first oak tree on my property. So I gotta be investing in a rake soon, but um, I know I'm doing a lot of raking and, and garden cleanup in that way. Mm -hmm. Well, raking is good, but I also compost. So I have um, a big oak tree in the front. Um, I take my leaves, I, I've got a couple projects going on, but I take my leaves and I put them in burlap bags. Mm -hmm. And when I run out of those, because I kind of make those over the summer, because mm -hmm. I do a lot with my hands, but I'll put them in the bags, but I also use the brown paper bags, but I do not allow the city to pick them up. I take those bags and I put them in my back because all that's going to break down. And I have utilized everything that is broken down from my garden in the whole 17 years I've been in my house. Hmm. So beautiful? I throw nothing away. Um, Edwina uh, Von Gao is just two, two thirds for the birds, but she too utilizes everything debris wise from her garden and back into her garden. And I'm the same way. So the leaves that I will rake from my humongous oak tree in the front, um, I have a drive, I call it my drive lip. It's a driveway, but it's not paved. But all those leaves are going to grow, are going to go on top of the mulch. I had these bags of mulch sitting. I just put it down. Mm -hmm. I'm putting the leaves on top and I'm shredding them. Mm -hmm. with my dad's push lawnmower because mm. I'm a quiet gardener. I'm going to shred them up and leave them. That's where I'm going to do my container garden next spring with my smart pots. That way I'm demonstrating to my community what can be done. And it's in the front, so I won't forget about it. And it'll be beautiful because I'll do cut flowers. I'll do some veggies. Mix it up. Kind of like a, a, vic a victory garden on my driveway. I love that. Not? Yes. Yeah. And I mean, as much as I think the people in the Chesapeake Bay region know about fertilizer, it's a regulation, but I still see bagged leaves at the end of people's driveways. And I want to scream and say, this is free compost, free fertilizer for your gardens. And now is the time to be making that. I mean, I love that you can, I've never actually gotten one of those big bags. They are just paper bags. There's no liner in them. There's no liner in them. Yeah. And so, you know, bags, paper, made yep. from trees, it yep. all breaks down. Yep. And, you know, in the winter time when we're, well, you shouldn't be sitting inside. You should be outside doing something. Walk your, your garden, see what branches are crossing. You can prune those. Yes. Um, but in the winter time, you can take whether the bag is a brown bag or a burlap bag and you turn them. But uh, speaking of pruners, you can I take know, glad you brought that up. branches, you can prune those out and you can put those as an underlayer for your composting activity. Hmm, I've never done that. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right, let's get back to garden community gardening. Um, so you are, I, I said, I'm not a member of a community garden. How would you suggest if people, because nobody commented about their community garden, so maybe no one is a member. How do you go about joining and finding a community <laughs> garden? Google. They probably aren't a member because the waiting lists are long everywhere, even probably. before the pandemic. But it depends on where you live. Uh, in Virginia, like the Fairfax um, Soil and Water Conservation Council, they monitor their community gardens. In Montgomery County and Prince George's County, uh, Montgomery County, you go to MontgomeryParks.org, uh, Prince George's County, PGParks.com, and you can get on the waiting list. If people are not interested, they will open it up. But when mm. I say you have to be on the ready, you really have to be on the ready. Because the day they open it up, if if you're if you've been a, a past member, they will call you and say, We have a, a spot open. Otherwise, you're on the waiting list. And they're always looking for more places to expand. Um, right now. You know, because of COVID, that's kind of quiet at the moment. Mm -hmm. But trust and believe, everybody will be looking in the spring. Because I think 
with this time of pausing, I call it unintentional period of pausing, we've all been given an opportunity to go, hmm, there's got to be more than this. Yes. Let's get outside, embrace nature. Yes. And if it's just planting lettuce in a pot, plant lettuce in a pot. If you love, love basil, it. put basil in a pot. Because mm -hmm. why not? Mm -hmm. I, I love that. The unintentional pause. You know, we do a trends report and the title of our trends report this year was called The Great Reset because it really was that opportunity that we were given. You know, we should look at it as the gift. Back to that mm -hmm. gift. I think we've got a title for this talk, um, but it is a gift that we have been forced to reset, to pause, take a look at what we were doing, and then reset if you so desire. So that is beautiful. Thank you. Um, all right. Are you frozen? Are you the not? Can you hear me? To okay. pivot. Yeah. It's an opportunity for all of us to pivot. Ooh. What were we doing that we didn't find time to garden? What were we doing that we didn't find time to read that stack of books. Maybe we should take a back, take it back a notch mm -hmm. and embrace it, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. find those things that really, really bring us joy. Yes. Yeah. And gardening is right into the top. Yeah, gardening. And I, so tell us about your sweatshirt. Speaking of what is life, oh. gardening is life. Agriculture is it. life. Um, I, I'm all about young people because young people are not asking permission. <laughs> They're just embracing it. And this young woman, Arnisha, I'm going to get it right, Arnisha Smallwood, has a website and it's called Agriculture is Life. So I have her t-shirt, I have the sweatshirt, I have to get the mug. But it spoke to me because agriculture is life. It feeds us, it, and not just from our mouth, but it feeds our mind. Mm. It feeds our heart and our soul. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this on, on Instagram, because the young people are all over Instagram, I saw this and I was like, I need that. That speaks mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And I think it's speaking to a lot of people right now. Mm -hmm. It sure is. It sure is. I love seeing these groups. And this is what we'll, we'll talk about now is these groups that are forming online and these people who are gathering together, whether it be, you know, under whatever hashtag, maybe agriculture is life is a hashtag too, um, mm -hmm. and yeah. gathering together to share in their love of plants, whether it be indoor or outdoor, and it's creating these communities. Mm -hmm. Someone said to me last week that they think that the garden club is, should I say it? They said they think the garden club is not going to survive much longer. I have a difference of opinion and Me I'm too. curious what you think, because I feel like I'm seeing more and more people getting together. Maybe it's not under the nomenclature of garden club, right. but I feel like more and more people are getting together than ever before to right. find common interests in gardening. So I'm curious right. what you think about that. I think that once again, the word pivot comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Garden clubs are pivoting. And you're right, it may not be called a garden club, but in my community, just to give you a few examples, um, we started connecting through Next Door Neighbor. So Next Door Neighbor has been a place, not just for the city of District Heights, but the surrounding communities. We opened it up, we shared what we were harvesting, mm. who had the groundhog, how to, how to get rid of the groundhog, <laughs> supposedly you know, deer issues, things like that. So it was this active conversation. And even though many people, except for probably me, have yanked their gardens out, um, I was still asking people, so what's in your garden? And I was offering them advice like, oh, you have a shady garden? Do you, are you growing sarcocoa? You know, do, do you, what, what else do, do you have? Do you have hellebore that's gonna bloom in January? Some of these are plants that they had never heard of. Mm -hmm. So as I'm engaging in community, I'm also educating community. Mm -hmm. And we'll have this conversation, you know, they're deer proof or the deer will leave those for last. Are you growing Galanthus novalis? Oh, what's that? So it's an opportunity for us to have real conversations and not be virtual. We might do a Zoom but we probably will keep it up through next door neighbor until the spring when we can meet again. We yes. even start thinking about doing a virtual seed exchange, you know? So other ways, uh, I'm a member of GardenCom. I'm a region two director. 
we're, we, we try to gather people together, but due to COVID, people are a little hesitant. But what am I doing? My part is I'm going to all these places that we might overlook because in the spring, should we be able to move about freely? I want people to go there. Mm-hmm. Like the Hampton Historic Site. Who knew there was a formal garden like that in Maryland? Right outside of Baltimore. It was beautiful. It totally took me back. I had to sit, I really had to sit for 30 minutes and gather myself. Mm. I had no idea. Yeah. It was, and we just art, artfully laid out. Mm. It was just beautiful. And then the park ranger came by and spoke to me. And he's like, Yeah, I want to get a garden club to come in and volunteer to help take care of the herb garden. So forward thinking. Mm-hmm. He's not giving up. Mm-mm even in spite of COVID. So other ways to connect. If you love a certain plant, there is a group for that. Absolutely. There's a group for that. Uh, Evergreens and Conifer Society. There's a group for that. Um, Then you can also join Friends of Places, Friends of the uh, National Arboretum, Friends of Green Spring, Friends of Brookside Gardens. Um, Then you have Garden Clubs of America. you know, your local garden clubs, some of them are federated, some of them are not. But in your community, there is some way that you can connect with other like-minded people yes. to garden in community. Yes, I love that. And I think the, the point about that is going back to the societies, the African Violet Society, the Orchid Society, all of those mm-hmm. have started to wane. But I truly believe that we are seeing such an interest in young people. I've, I've heard now these young people want to speak Latin. They want to know the Latin names of these plants. And that is our societies. Those are the things that our societies keep alive. And the thing that that you guys out there, you know, you are probably gardeners if you're listening to this already, but that bringing in more people to the hobby will be able to allow us to bring back those societies, bring mm-hmm. some maybe cer- cer- help these rare plants survive. People right. who are collectors of these rare plants, now they can pass them on to people who can, you know, propagate them and grow them. And now we have enormous collections. So it's a right. beautiful thing to see this love pass on. And I really do think that once we got back into, once we can see each other, the meeting up in real life is going to be so important. I know you tried to organize an event um, and it did not, it just people were not comfortable enough yet to, right, to meet they up. They weren't comfortable. But you know what? The seed has been planted. So in the spring, we will do, we'll, you know, we'll coordinate more um, small group excursions, depending on people's comfort level. Um, for example, you know, one of the places locally that people can visit that's a hot place in the spring is Sherwood Gardens outside of Baltimore. It was designed by Olmstead, but they have a tulip display like no other. So, you know, maybe I'll take a weekend and drive up there and see what it's like in the fall because they also have native plants and perennials. So let's see what it looks like in the fall so that in the spring, we can visualize mm. where will the tulips be? What mm-hmm. will they look like? What mm-hmm. cultivars did they choose? You know, it just gives us hope. Once again, mm-hmm. the, the garden, it gives us hope. It's such a gift. It really is. It is. It is. And Natalie is asking, uh, I think what you're asking, Natalie, is to post links to all of these societies. And we will certainly, I know Courtney will be posting some right now to the mm-hmm. Sherwood, you just mentioned Sherwood Botanic Gardens. Yeah. What was the Hampton house you mentioned? It's the Hampton, his Hampton Historic Site. The Hampton Historic Site. Mm-hmm. And then Natalie, don't worry, we'll make sure to post links, anybody, uh, any of them who are on Facebook. But if you are if you love African Violets, Natalie, Google African Violet yeah. Society. But there's a better way also. Go to Peg I'm sorry, Peg Plant. Peggy has a whole listing oh. of places to go, societies to join. I mean, it's it's a pretty thorough listing, even okay. of the local garden clubs that are not federated. Federated garden clubs are under a different rule, kind of, but she has it all listed there. 
Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Peg. If you're still there, you can post that or Courtney, you can go to Peg Plant and find that. But Natalie, mm -hmm. don't worry. We'll take care of you. We want to make sure everybody can join these groups and be yeah. together, whether it be online or in real life. We want right. to be able to share in this knowledge and continue to grow, you know, the passion and love for plants. So um, a few to say too, can I add real quick? Some of these places, a lot of them are public gardens. And even in the midst of, of COVID, the public gardens have, they've been hanging on and some of them might not be as pristine as we would like them to be, but another way to educate yourself, go to these public gardens, look at what is surviving. Those are your diehard, tough as nails plants because yes. they might've grown through weeds, around weeds, they might have grown and smothered out the weeds. There are lessons, another gift, in the garden. So even if you have to peek through a fence, like I've done all summer at the Botanic Garden, but I survived. <laughs> Thank goodness there's an open space. Um, but look at what is surviving in your region. That's a lesson. So if you go to some of these um, places, a couple more I'd like to mention because we all know about the common places, but London Town. Oh, there's nothing like London Town in the dead of winter mm. when you can sit down by the, the 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 water and talk about a place of peace. Mm. Anne Marie Sculpture Garden. That's another place. You can walk through there sometimes and never even see people. The mm. building itself, they used to have classes and all, well, that's not happening right now but the grounds are phenomenal. Mm. So gardening does not have to stop because we're in the post season, as I like to say, but exploring public gardens, mm. learning from them as they are, is one of the best educations in the world. And I love what you said, and I just wanted to highlight that, that when you're visiting gardens in your area, most likely those are plants you can too grow. You know, you don't have to grow. I mean, and I urge you to shop at Homestead where you can get unusual plants, not your big right. box store where you get the same old plants that everyone gets. Go visit your local public garden, your local botanic gardens, and see what they're growing. Because usually they'll be hardy. You're right. Because they don't That's have right. a, a, you know, they have a staff to take care of them, of course, but... Mm -hmm. I know they're a public garden. Become a member for sure. Become a member and and visualize those plants in your garden. And I think that is such a great tip because in garden local garden tourism is one of my favorite things to do. Yes. I happen to live close to Longwood Gardens and stand <laughs> clear, so of course I'm very lucky in that sense. But yeah. it really is one of my favorite things to do because I know that I can grow all of these things. Mm -hmm. I have the option to make my backyard look like Chanticleer, if I want, <laughs> not. <laughs> and, but, and also the beauty of going to them as well, you know, everyone's going to flock to them in season. Yeah. Go in the winter time. Yeah. Go to the National Arboretum and watch those evergreens come to life in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought, I mean, most people are like, oh, well, it's cold outside. There's nothing to see. Oh, yes, there is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. public gardens are inspirational, they're educational, they inform us on the possibilities of anything and everything we can garden, mm -hmm. put in our gardens locally. A couple other gardens, the, the Silburn Arboretum? Silburn. Silburn the Arboretum, Silburn. Yeah. yeah. Homestead has a few favorites that I, I have obviously not been to, I need to visit. <laughs> Brookside Gardens. Brookside and has a, uh, their... Uh, Chrysanthemum show is happening right now. Oh, all right. Courtney, make sure you're posting for Natalie and for everybody else listening. Mm -hmm. um, and the incredible work of Sam Baer at the University of Maryland's Land Grant Campus. Yes. So that's another suggested little local tourism spot. And mm -hmm. thank you, Peggy. She's posting some more public gardens in the DC metro area. So um, you have the whole winter, fall, winter. And you know, listen, you can still go in the spring. More and more people, I, I guess the research shows that people were outside two hours more per day during the yeah. pandemic than they were before. And after yeah. the pandemic, I know I want more activities to do with my family, but they have to be outside. 
You know, that mm -hmm. is one important thing that I am going to, I'm craving a tent, you know, a physical interaction with people. So mm -hmm. if I can see people get together with my friends and it's all outside. So I think that these are going to be really hot spots come spring. So as oh, Terry's yeah. saying, visit them now. Mm -hmm. So you can get the lay of the land and it won't be your first time when you go in spring to see all of them. I'm sure they'll have fall bowl displays. Yeah, I was going to say bulbs because Homestead has a wonderful selection of bulbs. That's how I got in trouble. But <laughs> um, if you want something to do now to engage community and create a stir and a conversation, plant some bulbs. Yes. Bulbs give you hope for the next season. They are a gift. Plant them now. Wait till spring and voila. And your neighbors will go, oh my goodness, I've never seen that before. Boom. Connect. Yes. Yeah. Fall planted bulbs. So those are the ones that if you don't know, I'm sure all of you who are listening know this, but the tulips and the daffodils that come up in spring, those are the ones that have to be planted now. So what are you, some of your favorite fall planted bulbs? Galanthus novalis. Mm. Mm. I can't get enough. They're called snowdrops commonly, but Galanthus novalis. Um, I love crocus because they that's my signal that okay, time to start exercising because you're gonna you're gonna be gardening. Um, and then all sorts of daffodils. I'm waiting for um, more daffodils to come because I had to I had to plant some when I went to homestead because they were there. So I don't do a lot of tulips, um, but I do a lot of daffs, a lot of galanthus, a little bit of muscari. Um, and alliums. Alliums are the bomb. Oh, I have, I've got 40 waiting to be planted. I've already planted 50. Um, I am going all in on alliums this year. I have a new mm -hmm. garden. It's silver and white, but I thought this pop of purple, you know, in June, late May here, June will be absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I'm, I'm a huge fall planted bulb fan because you do the work now when you really don't have, unless you're Terry, but when you really don't have much else to do in the garden and all of a sudden, boom, they are there for you in the spring and they keep performing. So we could yeah. just chat on and on and on about fall bulbs, but yeah. Yeah. Um, There's so many options. And even if you, um, you know, you can put them in a pot. You can put them in the ground. Um, you can force them, you know, your hyacinths. You can force them in the fridge and bring them indoors. So you can also bring spring indoors. That's why gardening is never over for me. There's always a project. I Another thing you can do, a homestead does have seeds still. You can purchase seeds. I always suggest perennials. Annuals are great. Annuals are cute. But get those perennial seeds. Why? Make seed balls. Yeah, great, great winter project. Yes. Um, two things about that. So um, seeds, I have heard already, people are stocking up on their seeds for next year because they're they're afraid that they're going to run into what happened this year, that seeds are selling out. So I haven't actually heard from Homestead what the situation is there, but I have seen people in my Facebook group saying they're already buying their seeds. Yeah. Um, certainly saving seeds is great too. So that's really interesting. And then you mm -hmm. talked about forcing bulbs. Well, you guys, next Monday, November 2nd, uh, Terry, I'm going to have David Mattern on from Chanticleer, and we're going to do a whole <laughs> show on forcing bulbs. So if you want to know about that, he's going to have some tricks and tips for us, um, mm -hmm. one of the experts and the pros, on doing what she just said, bringing spring indoors. You get to have mm -hmm. those beautiful flowers inside. You can trick Mother Nature. Yep. Yeah. So we're doing that next week. So you had, you mentioned it. So I had to give a little shout out to our next Monday <laughs> show, but we're still here talking this. Um, so you mentioned your groups that you like um, meeting up in real life, where you like to go and visit some local spots. Do you have any online groups? I mean, I know everyone's online right now, but any in particular online groups that you love? Um, I, I, I play a lot with what I call the kids on Instagram, you know, <laughs> black girls with gardens, um, which you've had her on before, um, uh, the crazy botanist. I love listening to what other people are doing. So going on Instagram mm -hmm. and following some of these young, the young people, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, they are the seeds. The mm -hmm. young people are the seeds. They're going to grow this gardening thing like we didn't. And they're pivoting. They're finding new and different ways. There's a young lady in California that is uh, has a people lined up 
to get cuttings in a park, yeah, of houseplants to Love encourage it. people to connect with nature. Love it. We wouldn't have thought about that kind of stuff. So <laughs> that's why, you know, I, I encourage everyone, go online, Facebook, Instagram, and put in plants. You can pick and choose who you'd like to follow. Um, there's a group called Black Men with Plants. Who would have thought? And there are some gorgeous plants. On, on that site, <laughs> for real. So you just have to, you just have to be, you know, I would rather find these little groups and their niche groups. Some groups, once again, just focus on African violets. Some just focus on bulbs. Some just focus on houseplants. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced that people are really embracing houseplants, me included, because where normally I would be going to work every day and nurturing my coworkers, mm. my houseplants are here. Mm. I can wipe their leaves down. I can, you know, make sure that they're fed properly, remove any dead and dying foliage. It is a way to care for something. Mm. So even in the midst of all this madness we're in right now, people are finding it necessary to have something to love and to care. So there's so many houseplant worlds going on out there right now. Um, I, I invested in Monstera, which I knew I shouldn't have done it, but mine are so gorgeous right now. Ah! I gave one to my daughter, and then I gave one to my other daughter. <laughs> so I'm a Monstera promoter at the moment. Um, and oh, that was another thing. Homestead had a new shipment of houseplants. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I go every that. week to make sure that I haven't missed anything. Well, they have some really unusual ones. And that's when we were talking about people starting to learn Latin because they want to get those unusual varieties of houseplants. And mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a whole houseplant month in January for Homestead. It's National Indoor Houseplant Month. So we're going to have Hilton Carter on, Summer yes. Rain, Houseplant yes. Journal. So we're going to have so many people talking houseplants because it is such a fun topic that yeah. people are so passionate about. So we are definitely yeah. going to be talking about that in January. So and Summer uh, Rain gives wonderful tours of her, her place on YouTube. That's inspirational. <laughs> for what? 1,100 houseplants. Yeah. Uh, Heather I'm not saying, even going there. Are the best when the truck pulls up to Homestead with all the new plants. So we need to get on the, the back end and when that happens. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I kept walking by them. When they were unloading them just to kind of peek. And then it was like, <laughs> well, I probably should head home. <laughs> but that that was the day I spent a hundred bucks and I didn't even get a house plant that day. I was very <laughs> well behaved, but I made up for it last weekend. <laughs> oh, well, this has been a gift to chat with you. This has been wonderful. I think Natalie was saying how much this was so wonderful for her to learn about all the new places to visit. We will make sure to go back through and post all the links that we talked about in the comments to make sure you guys won't miss any of them. I know Peg, Peggy posted a bunch of them as well. So there are no, um, there's no shortage of resources out there yeah. but we'll make sure to put them here in the comments um so this has been wonderful please make sure to like homestead's facebook page so you don't miss any of these and rsvp to all of the events as we'll be posting them so you don't miss them but terry yeah. this has been wonderful thank you so much thank you thank you for having me oh and don't Natalie, forget to grow. yes Natalie just giving us a big comment here. Natalie, I'm so glad that you have um, such fond memories of Homestead. I don't think I know tuna fish the llama, but maybe Heather, you you can send Natalie some pictures of some llamas to, to brighten her day. Um, but thank you so much, Natalie, for tuning in and for everybody else. This program is made in part due to the Garden Rewards Pro membership. So be, please become a member. And don't forget that it's still Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So you can up your purchase to make a donation to breast cancer awareness. And that's a wonderful cause. Um, and I already mentioned, we'll be back next Tuesday, November 2nd at noon. No, did I say Tuesday? Next Monday at Monday, noon yeah. to do forcing bulbs. So we're gonna do some really fun ones like Terry mentioned, like hyacinth and daffodils, but then the amaryllis and the paper whites too. So mm -hmm. we are all over it. And Peggy said, your enthusiasm spills over. So thank you so much. Um, 
we appreciate your time. And everybody out there, we appreciate your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.